This is another live radio link up brought to you by the government communications GCIS. 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 Welcome, dear listeners, to this special broadcast brought to you by the Department of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, COCTA. I'm Lennox Glass. For the purposes of tonight's program, I will allow you to refer to the department as COCTA. Yes, we call it the department COCTA. This broadcast seeks to heighten our understanding about some of the government's interventions in the quest to assist people of South Africa to off-ramp the cycle of poverty. Yes, much has been done by the government. As we know that it is not the business of the government to create employment, but from time to time, government would offer work opportunities to the people of South Africa. Tonight, in our special broadcast, we bring you the Deputy Minister of COCTA, Ndate Andres Snell. Welcome, Deputy Minister, to the program. Good evening, uh, Lennox, and to all of your listeners, uh, thank you very, very much. It's a huge pleasure for us to, to be here tonight. Well, well, dear listeners, uh, Deputy Minister is not alone. Uh, Deputy Minister, as I can assure you, in fact, probably you'll see later in the television, uh, Deputy Minister is accompanied by <laughs> very, very many colleagues that I know specializes in some of these things that we're going to be talking about today. I can assure you listeners who are ready for tonight's program. Indeed, tonight we bring you one of the important government interventions, community work program. You'll be given an opportunity to interact with the deputy minister. Remember, deputy minister is not coming here for the first time. We were very fortunate. He joined us when we're doing one of many Let's Talk Justice programs, our regular program. But tonight, DM is wearing a different hat. He's here. He's going to talk about these programs that I know you cannot wait for us to start. The program that we're going to be talking about is called Community Work Program. You'll be given an opportunity then to call and ask the, co the, 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 the questions around this program. And our toll-free number is 0800-142-446. The number again, I know you did not have the pen. The number is 0800-142-446. I can assure you, by the time we leave this program tonight, you will be so empowered like the way you've never been empowered before. Let me just go through some of the questions that we're going to be deliberating on tonight. We're going to talk and try and try and find out exactly what is community work program. Like we've said, DM is here. DM is going to dissect this program for us. Besides this offering work opportunities to the locals, DM is going to share with us what else that this program has achieved. Besides that, the DM is going to be talking with us about the benefits of these programs to the local people out there. What is it that the people have benefited? As we're talking about the benefits, we're going to be able to reflect how far that this program has gone in terms of assisting the communities out there. We have statistics, we have incidents, we know practically we are going to talk about the work opportunities that are presented by this program. We don't want people to call us tomorrow and say, look, I'm a doctor or I want to become a doctor. Can the program help me? So DM is going to assist us tonight to talk about the kind of work opportunities that people will be confronted with when they join. And above all, what is it that I must do to benefit from these programs? Perhaps we've seen people wearing a particular color doing work in our localities. No, no, I don't want you to think those people have connections in the department. So we're going to discuss with you how you can benefit in this program so that you know it has nothing to do with you knowing something at Cogta or in your municipality. Th th these are the programs. 
dare to keep the ball rolling. Uh, do you want to dissect this uh, community work program for the listeners? When you say what is community work program, what is it? So that when they leave this program, they know. Well, thank you very, very much, uh, Lennox, for, for, for this opportunity. I'd just like to, to thank uh, you as GCIS, but also to thank the 75 community radio stations that we are linked up with. Your work as uh, community uh, radio stations in giving important information to communities, being the voice of the community, being a point through which the community can help to, to organize itself uh, is extremely important and we, we, we value that contribution very, very much. The Community Works Work Program is one of the most important uh, programs that we as the Department of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs are running. The program was given to us in 2009 by the Presidency. I think you, we might remember that in 2009 we had a world economic crisis that started off in the United States and in Europe. It happened because the big banks, big financial institutions in those countries lent money very recklessly in the housing market. That caused the entire financial system in the world to collapse. Millions of people across the world lost their jobs. Millions of South Africans were affected as well. So we know that in South Africa, the questions of poverty, unemployment and inequality along with crime and corruption, are the big issues uh, that affect the lives of, of South Africans. And that's why after that uh, crisis, we had a job summit. And out of that job summit, government came with different initiatives to try and create employment, but also to strengthen the safety net uh, that was already there with social grants, uh, with sc school feeding schemes, um, so Community Works Program was started, um, it was uh, developed and then given to COGTA to implement and to roll out on a massive scale. So what does Community Works Work Program do? It's a program whereby those in the community who are unemployed, who don't have an income, can work for at least two days a week, eight days a month and a hundred days a year. They earn, at the moment, 81 rand a day. That will go up to 86 rand a day on the 1st of November. And what makes Community Work Program very special is that it's a community-driven program. Um, the program is implemented not directly by government, but by non-governmental organizations that are appointed to run the program. We call them implementing agents. Those implementing agents work in every area where there's a CWC site with a steering committee, uh, a community steering committee that brings together the councillor, religious leaders, representatives from different sectors in society. And that group together decides what is it that we need in this community. Do we need a vegetable garden? Do we need our sports field to be fixed or maintained? Does our school need to be painted? Are there old people in the community who need to be cared for? Our children uh, at school, do they need uh, to be mentored and taught? Uh, do we have a lot of waste in our community that can be recycled and transformed into products that can be sold? Um, is there maybe a little river that we need to build a bridge over so that people, members of the community can cross over more safely. All of those activities in one way or another, CWP uh, is involved in. So members who need that income or get given the opportunity to earn something and at the same time, they do socially useful work that's determined uh, by the community. And Lennox, I can say just the, the, the work that has been done is fantastic. I mean, if we look at Gauteng alone, for example, 
CWP participants cleared almost 300,000 square meters of public places, rivers and canals. 1,051 illegal dumping sites uh, were cleared by CWP participants. 2,076 community vegetable gardens were planted and maintained. 81,000 square meters of cemeteries were cleared by CWP participants. More than 10,000 children were helped at creches by CWP participants. So the value of CWP is that it's giving people an income at the same time. It's helping the community and it's restoring the dignity mm. uh, of both the community and those who are participating. Mm. In terms of the financial benefits for those who are participating, um, the budget for, for CWP for the current financial year of uh, 2016 to 17 is almost 3.2 billion rand. Now, the good thing is that 95% of that money goes to actual implementation of the project. It's only 5% that is used by the Department for Administration. About 65% of that money goes directly into the pockets of participants. So for the current financial year, 2.1 billion rand will go to the almost 230,000 CWP uh, participants. So it's, it's having a real impact. It's a program that we're proud of and that we're working very hard to expand and also to make that program much more effective, that it has a, a bigger impact both on communities and on the lives of participants. Uh, Deputy Minister, I know you have reflected when we're talking about the scope that we cover when it comes to this program. But for, 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 for the sake of amplifying uh, the point, uh, if we look back, are we able to point and say this is the impact that has been made by this program? Maybe by way of citing some of uh, the people who have come to the department or some of the things visually that we can mm -hmm. look at and say this has been the impact practically of the program? No, absolutely. I mean, I've, uh, ever since I was given responsibility, um, first by Minister Gordon and now by Minister van der Rooyen for overseeing this program, I've visited many, many CWP sites throughout the, the country. And I must say, um, some of those sites really inspire you. Once you've visited that site, you, you go away and for the next week or weeks, you're absolutely inspired because you really see what we can achieve when communities organize themselves, they work with organizations in the community and they, together they work with, with, with government. So, for example, there's a wonderful CWP site just uh, outside uh, Tswane uh, called Erasmus. Now, in that community, you will find CWP participants coaching young people in uh, football. You will find every, in every block, there are beautiful, beautiful vegetable gardens that are providing food to schools, to old age homes, to creches, to other members of the community that, that need. You will find CWP participants uh, mentoring young people in schools. In that site, in fact, uh, the CWP program teamed up with uh, Public Works and the participants built a little bridge across a, a river. You have old people engaged in recycling of, of waste. But the really wonderful thing there was that we teamed up with the Department of Small Business Development and we said, how can we go in there and work with the community to use all of these skills and activities in a way that the community can start its own businesses? So in the course of last year, CWP, COGTA, together with Small Business Development, trained 23 cooperatives. Um, and it, it, 
just uh, earlier in the year, the Deputy Minister of Small Business Development and I went and handed them their certificates. Those certificates now accredit those uh, cooperatives, amongst others, to qualify for grants from the Department of Small Business Development of up to 300,000 Rand mm. to take their businesses further. And I can tell you, the products that those cooperatives were, were producing and marketing, vegetables, leather work, sewing, brick making, I mean, it was a real, real, it was clear that that community, those participants, were wanting to use the skills that they gained through CWP to take themselves and their community to a much higher level. And we see examples of that uh, throughout the, the country. In Eastern Cape, uh, there was one uh, participant, uh, Mr. Magwevana, who joined CWP as a participant. He was promoted to a supervisor. While on the program, he got his driver's license. He's left the program and he's now become a, a paramedic. Mm. Um, also in the Eastern Cape, uh, Mr. Vumile Msoki joined CWP in, 19, in 2012. Uh, on the program, he learned how to weld. Now he's responsible for doing all of the welding work at the CWP site in Amashlati. But importantly, over weekends, He's taken the initiative to start a welding cooperative, and they do do work. And there are many, many examples like that mm. through throughout the country. There, there, there you are. We are still tuned to the special broadcast brought to you by Quokta, GCIS, and all the community radio stations. Uh, at, at this point, uh, I can see Tsepo from Clegstorp and Mushatupa from Free State are dying to mm. ask you DM a question. And, and uh, let's go to class stop first and, 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 and take Tsepo. Tsepo, you're on Hi, sir. I'm on the phone. 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 i so the difference is uh, EPWP. Now the difference I think is before it gets like a Thank you very much. I, th I think that it's a very, very important uh, question that uh, Tsepo from Clarksdorp has raised. EPWP stands for Extended Public Works Program. CWP stands for Community Work Program. In one sense, CWP is part of e EPWP because the Department of Public Works is responsible for coordinating all of the so-called public employment programs that are run by government. So we all fall under that umbrella of EPWP. There you'll find CWP, you'll find uh, working uh, for water, working against fire, um, and many, many of the, the, the other programs run by, by different uh, departments. But EPWP is also, in the narrow sense of the word, is a program that is run by the Department of Public Works. What makes EPWP and CWP different? EPWP participants enter the program, they sign a contract for a definite period, maybe six months or nine months or a year, they work almost full-time for that year on a, diff on a given project. And once that six months or nine months is over, they leave the program. CWP, on the other hand, a participant comes in. They work two days a week, eight days a month, up to 100 days a year. But they can come in and out of the program. Uh, as they they wish or as they need to. So there's no be there's no there's a beginning, but there's no definite endpoint to your participation in CWP. So that's very very important because especially in uh, rural areas, uh, farming areas, you'll find that many of the CWP participants work on farms during planting or harvesting season, but when those seasons are over, they don't have em employment.
and that's when they come back and they participate in CWP. So CWP, as I said in the beginning, is not so much a employment creation program as part of government social security safety net. And that's why people can come in and out of the program as they, 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 they need to. And, and Dr. Tsepo, I know you are prefixing your question. You can ask the question now. Okay. Uh, so ARCWP. So I think that the department the month of twenty twenty nine and ten years here community program. But I don't want to go to the Basha, but I don't want to go to the Basha. Maybe the especially if you are motivated by the Basha, I think you can go to the So the department is going to go to the Basha, but I don't want to go to the Basha. Thank you, Ntepo. Listen to the radio. Uh, let's go to Mushua Tupa, Free State. What's your question, sir? Mm-hmm. Korea <laughs> Na ileke motse wa jwalo wa gona hala hore a ka fumantswa bo di tshela ke ka e sa le tsema ka ba ke lana go yo a se re ditse ke ba di tshimo fonte ke ka mamela sa le moeng ja le go Danke ntate danke danke eh now let's go to Mbulelo all the way eh uh, to Northern Cape Mbulelo Hello eh sorry sir do you want to Switch off your rate or take it all the way down. Um, Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Okay. My question to the Norman. Now I would ask you, why is this a focus in my area? Like, oh, I don't know at the end of the day, we will have a benefit to something like this program. This program is going to be able to do this. We will have a benefit to
after all le retard na mo ba ni re de re ka ka tsa mo ka ba mme le ka ba mme ke re di re ke so iya 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 thank you very much nda tembulelo nda temhlwa thupa nda tetsepo we will we will we will respond uh, to your questions in this in this fashion uh, a dm is going to try and, and and pick and choose which one is going to tackle first listen to the rate of dm no thank you very much i think i think firstly just to, to continue with uh, tepo's uh, questions i think the the first issue is a very important one how do we monitor uh the program and ensure that it uh, delivers uh on its objectives and also that we eliminate the possibility of corruption or manipulation of the the program so we have in our studio also with me uh, dr simpiwe mgadi who's the acting uh, deputy director general responsible for the program uh, she leads a team of officials at uh, cogta national um that work very very closely with the ngos the implementing uh, agents we meet with those implementing agents ap- approximately once uh, a quarter uh, to engage with them to make sure that it's clear what we want out of the program and also to to get uh, reports from them at a local level there's a local reference uh, committee as i said that's meant to be representative of a broad sector uh, of the community and that 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 local reference committee is meant also to oversee the work uh, of the 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 implementing agents now in some areas that works very very well um and there are very very little pr- problems with the program but we 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 also know that that's unfortunately not the the case everywhere we know that uh, in some areas there are problems with the the program um there are or there are perceptions that people are recruited on the basis of loyalty to individuals and stuff and we are very very against that um and we've adopted uh, strong policies uh, against that so if anyone knows of any such instances please don't hesitate to to report them to us uh, i'll give a a toll free number uh, just now where any such uh, complaints uh, can can be brought secondly what what how does cwp empower uh, the youth well look cwp is there for a wide range of people within the community but we we've made it clear that we want in particular women young people and people with disabilities to to benefit uh, from the program and i think young people benefit from <coughs> because the cwp has so many diverse programs many of those programs i think are ideally suited for young people so in in particular those programs that deal with um mentoring s- learners at school projects like uh, brick making also many of the CWP training programs focus on things like computer literacy skills and i think all of those are to to the benefit of young people and also programs that revolve around issues of culture the example that i cited earlier of uh, the CWP site in Erasmus there's a very very vibrant uh, cultural group that predominantly has young people and as i also mentioned the, there's a football coaching program where see the young CWP participants get trained as football coaches and then go on to to coach uh, learners at at school so i think CWP has a lot to to offer for to to young people but i can also just say that that we're working very very closely with other government departments such as the um department of uh, performance monitoring and evaluation in the presidency with the deputy minister in the presidency uh, deputy minister buti manamelo who's responsible for uh, <coughs> the national youth development agency to make linkages 
between C, the, C, the work that CWP does and the, the programs of the, the National Youth Development Agency and other related government programs. Secondly, um, Mr. Mushwatupa from the Free State's question about the, the, the stipend being very low. We appreciate that very much. We know that 81 Rand is not a lot of money. We know that even when that amount increases to 86 Rand uh, from the 1st of November this year, it's not a lot of money. If uh, the Minister of Finance uh, came to us in Cogta and said, we are doubling or we are trebling <laughs> your budget, we would be the very, very first people to push for that amount to, to be increased. But unfortunately, we have to operate within the budget that we have, and we're trying to reach and to benefit as many, many people as we can with the uh, money that we, we have at our, our disposal. So the, the, the 81 Rand represents an amount that is also that is determined by the Minister of, of, of Labour uh, through a proclamation. Um, and as and when there's more money, certainly we, we would be the first to push for an increase in that uh, stipend. Then thirdly, uh, Mbulelu's question about uh, skills development. It's, an imp it's, it's a very, very important part of, of, of CWP because we, we believe that much as CWP is not an employment-creating program, the, the primary goal of CWP is not to get people off the program. CWP works the way it does exactly to allow people to stay there for as long as they need to. But at the same time, we believe that we need to do everything we can while people are on the program to empower them, to give them skills and to give them opportunities to, to do other things as well. So in the, in the past year, about 44,000 uh, CWP participants benefited from one form of, of, of training uh, or another. And we've been meeting with all a, r a wide range of government departments to see how we can benefit from the programs that they might be ru running to enhance um, skills development. The one area, and uh, maybe I can, I can ask Dr. Ngadi just to speak to that, is that we, we've picked up from our visits to a number of sites that there has been a problem in some areas with the handing over of certificates uh, to, to participants. So maybe Dr. Ngadi can just say uh, a little bit more about that. But we, we, we appreciate appreciate the importance of training and also for people to get those uh, certificates. We're also trying to, to, to make, get into partnerships with the, the private sector, uh, especially in the area of skills development, and certainly the mining sector would be a very, very important one, especially in those areas of distressed mining communities. COGTA is part of the Interministerial Committee on Distressed Mining Communities, and in that context, we are trying to expand CWP as far as possible to those communities as well. The mining uh, industry some time ago set up a fund for job and skills creation, and we are exploring ways that we could also tap into, into those uh, resources. Um, there, there are incidents where we're aware that in some areas um, people have been excluded, they've been marginalized uh, from the program for a variety of reasons. We're saying that is wrong. We don't condone that. We would appreciate um, any information that we can get uh, so that we can root out uh, those uh, practices. The, we've established a toll-free number. I'd like to give that number. It's 0800-746-747. Let me repeat. 0800-746-747. 0800-746-747. That's a COGTA toll-free number. Please, if there are any incidents like that, please let us know. 
if there are very, very serious incidents of corruption, whatever that you come across and you feel, don't feel comfortable phoning that number, there are uh, hotlines, uh, anti-corruption hotlines, and there's also a presidential hotline that works on an absolutely anonymous basis where you can, you can lodge those complaints. Thank you very much, Tim. At the end of the program, listeners, don't worry. We will give the number again. But right now, uh, our pilots, Tamsanga and Shanin, they are fighting with me. They want me to repeat this number. <laughs> the number is 0800 142446. Join Elvis and Lydia from Mafikeng and ask the question and engage the Deputy Minister tonight. Now let's go to Cape Town. Uh, Elvis has a question. Elvis, you're on air. Hello. Hello, sir. Hello, uh, Tatu Elvis. Tatu Elvis, we are going to so tell the producers of Fone Lequacona. In line, Yako, I Vagali, Quapella. Don't worry, the Kella we beke, Bazok Fone La Food. If our Banikang in number Yako, Bazaita, Bazok Fone. And the food. Okay. Ah, ah. Baza kufone la tatu Elvis, au vakali tata. Ibeke... Go tete, go tete, tata. Talk. The next car la hazo. Ape police station in Saipi. 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 Watu wa baeza baga minister. Baga kufikina gozoni. Meko mle nengugi alondo. Ugo kufesa da pine da fumana ike pendi zifadonji ini. Patrick case in court of Asian court or Okay. Eh, question yako. At this point, can we go to Lydia? Lydia? Hello, how are you? Great, how are you, ma'am? I'm blessed, yeah. It's Lydia Nkuche from Mabato FM in Mafikeng. Okay. Um, yes. Uh, I just wanted to, to ask a question. There's a question I want to ask because as, as you explained to us, I was listening that what I've, I've, I've seen, uh, I've, I've heard from you, you said you are doing your, your best to assist uh, uh, the, 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 the community. It's true. As I saw in our, in our community, they are doing their best. There are some people from CPW that, 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 that uh, and even from, from uh, uh, CP. Uh, CW, CWP and EWP. So what I wanted to, uh, what I realized is, in this assistance that you are giving us, me, what I want to ask a question is, are you are you uh, hiring people or people those who are qualified uh, or those who have a, 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 a certificate, something like that? And then the other thing, that's my first question, or or are you hiring anyone? Then the second question, because why I'm, I'm saying that it is because of uh, even if. I realize that even if we are, we are you are helping us, we people we don't we don't accept. We still complain. So what I wanted na me alone, what, I, what, what we don't appreciate. So what I was saying me is I, I I just pray for us for all of us in South Africa. So we must help. We must be hang, We must uh, help each other mm. because we are doing our best and we must do our best. So so the, the one thing that, that I've seen that we need in in our country for us to go forward is. You no, know, we need we, 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 we need grace, the mm. first one from God. The second one, we need co reconciliation. You know, the, uh, uh, if if reconciliation can come in our country and forgiveness, and 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 and, and I believe you know things will go smoothly. But because of you are doing their, your best, honestly, I'm I'm saying because I saw. But now, if our country can know, Hori, that that uh, 
if you if you don't uh, point each other point each other and, and and forget about the past and forgive each other i believe your help we will see because now if even if you help me to to to, to give me a job it doesn't matter it's two days or three days because the way the word of god says we must look i must go to look for, for myself for a job it's not it, it, it doesn't mean that i must depend on you wow 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 wow, wow. wow. Now we we want to depend on you, and if we look at you, we won't go anywhere. So you you are doing your best. You are taking us halfway. You are wow. giving us ground. Wow. You are giving us some some something. Wow. We are free, but still we are still crying. So okay. uh, 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 re re reconciliation. Uh, uh, I'm, mm, I'm mm, talking about. Mm, mm. We must repent. Amen. 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 Mama Lydia, that Thank was great. You. That was great. It's good when people phone. And reflect some of the things you did, but uh, Minister, Deputy Minister, is going to respond. Mm. Thank you very much. And now let's go to Adam. Uh, Adam is your neighbor there. He's calling from Mafikeng as well. Adam, you are on air. Dumela ra. Ra, Dumela. The phone number is via Mavatu FM. Yes, sir. The next one is about to be the Minister Mo. But for EPWP, where is the room of growth for Bonne? Because here in Matiteng, we see them, Vasela di Pampiri, Samu Baka Hola, Mokara Hatro, Ponje. Where is the room of growth for Batla Van Tidalo, Obereka in the EWP? That will be all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for your question. Tim, we have Adam, Lydia, and Elvis go keep down. Okay. You can start any. Firstly, I, <coughs> I think just to um, Elvis in Cape Town's uh, question, I must say the, the line was a little bit bad. So I, I, I couldn't follow properly, but what I gather was that he was arrested and jailed for yeah. for three years According without to him, a, wrongly, a court. Wrongly, yes. Yeah. Mm. Look, I mean, I, you know, I being a... A lawyer by training and having been at uh, being deputy minister of justice for a, a number of years, I know these issues uh, are very difficult to to answer. Just in generalities, you need to actually sit with the, the person, get the detail, get the facts, uh, listen to all sides of the the story. So, what I would would ask is, I hope that uh, you you have um, Elvis's yes. number. Yes, yes, we do. Um, we do so that we could maybe get that number and link him up with our uh, colleagues in, at the Department of Justice. But uh, if I can also uh, maybe do a little bit of uh, promotion for my my colleagues uh, at, at Justice, if uh, Elvis could also tune in uh, to... Um, to the Talking Justice. Yes, yes, yes. Um, it's, every it's, Thursday. It's every Thursday. Yes. Talking at Justice is on air, um, and I think any member of the community that has questions mm. about our justice system, whether it's civil or criminal, uh, can certainly phone in uh, then. But please, if Elvis can give us his, if we can get Elvis's number, we'll link him with okay. uh, our colleagues at Justice. Lydia's question in for Lydia from Abatu's question. Um, no, I think just thank thank you very much uh, for for the the comments. Um, but I must say, I think the as far as we go around the country, uh, we're very very inspired uh, by those who participate in in CWP because many people don't take the the program for granted. Mm. They mm. see it as an important intervention by the government that they have elected. They've elected a government because they know that government is a caring government um, and they know that they can expect from that government to recognize when they need help. Um, what is the English expression? They say not, not a hand out, but a hand up. Mm -hmm. um, and really, it, it's so inspiring. We've had stories of CWP participants who even on the days when they are not allocated work they'll still put on their CWP uniforms and go and work mm. simply because they believe that they're serving their community because they believe there's dignity in going to work and as I think as a government 
we appreciate that there are millions of South Africans out there who want to work. South Africans are not lazy people. Mm. South Africans are people with dignity. They want to work. They believe that they can make a contribution. As government, we can't create all the jobs in the world. But certainly we can assist both citizens and the private sector to work together to, to create those jobs, to create those opportunities. Adam's question, Adam from Mafeking, your, your question, the um, EW, EPWP, how do we make it something that en uh, enables people to, to grow more? Mm. Let me just first, firstly say is that I don't think that there's anything wrong or undignified about cleaning a street. Any form of work comes with its own dignity and its own value to society. Um, so I don't think there's anything wrong with, uh, with cleaning. It's an honorable and a dignified uh, activity to do. But also we, 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 we want our programs um, to offer people more. EPWP, CWP, we say often it must be the beginning, not, not the end. And that is why in CWP there are so many different types of activity that uh, participants can engage in and why we emphasize the question of training and skills development and why we're seeking to work together with other government departments and with uh, the private sector to create opportunities exactly for, for people to grow. And I think some of the examples uh, that I've cited of CWP participants who've gone into those programs, have used the skills, the experience, the stipends that they earn on the program, and have gone on to either find full-time employment or to start their own businesses. And in fact, not only to employ themselves, but to create employment for, for other people. So there is growth. We know that the program is not uh, delivering all that we would want it to. And that's why we would appeal to, to, to listeners as well to, to partner with us. If there are any business people out there listening, please, we would like to partner with you. We'd like to make use of your skills and experience to help those who are participating in CWP to, to develop. You see, at the, um, earlier on, I had an opportunity to talk to one of the beneficiaries of the program. And uh, they promised that they were going to call. And I'm sure they are still going to call, not only that one and others. Uh, basically what she was saying to me, the joy of being able to go back home and there's no bread and be the one who provides that. And uh, people know that you've never worked, but this program came. And uh, partly to say to that caller, who called earlier and suggested that the, the, the amount is so little. DM responded that we acknowledge that, but can we imagine the joy that this person was relating to me of being able to come home? You know, when I left, there was nothing. And I came back with as little as that amount that we're talking about. And I was able to buy not only bread and milk, the kids are eating because of me. And I did not go and rob someone. I've earned that 10 rand, 20 rand to buy bread. Uh, they promised to call. I'm sure they're still trying to find their, 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 their telephone. They are going to phone. Uh, at the end, part of what I needed to establish from you, we know from time to time when these opportunities uh, are presented to the people. Uh, we tend to encounter some challenges. People would tend to say, no, but why those ones? Why not us? Do we have similar problems or challenges when it comes to this particular one? Mm -hmm. If yes, how do we address such challenges? And, and, and I'm not talking about an implied corruption, you know, I'm talking about people wanting to be convinced that I think these particular people are the only ones who've been benefiting. So how do we get, if you have such 
challenges and any other challenge? How do we address those? Mm. No, <clears throat> I think by and large, um, the recruitment of uh, participants to CWP takes place with without problems. Um, as I said, the, the program is implemented through NGOs. There are local reference committees um, that would include councillors, that would include religious leaders, civic leaders. Um, the decision to establish a CWP site in a particular area is not informed by, by whimsy. It's not just a a by-the-way decision. It's a decision that we take very carefully. We take the information that we get from Stats SA. We look very carefully at the socioeconomic indicators, the levels of unemployment, the levels of poverty in a, differ in a, diff in a given community to decide where to establish a CWP site based on the greatest need. Once the site is established, there's a local reference uh, group that also looks, based on objective criteria uh, of need, as to who should be prioritized for employment. Um, but of course we know that in the, the course of human affairs, you know, mm -hmm. there will always be challenges, and that's why we, we have checks and balances. The department monitors uh, very carefully. Uh, recently, in the, in the past few weeks, at the Interministerial Committee on Public Employment Programs, which is chaired by uh, Deputy Pr President Cyril Ramaphosa, uh, we adopted a policy framework exactly for, that sets out very clear criteria for how people should be employed onto our public employment uh, programs, exactly to deal with some of the challenges that, that do arise. I'm going to ask uh, Dr. Mgadi if she just wants to, to maybe add a little bit more about how the, the, the selection of participants works, um, because she, she's very active in monitoring that. But just to say, please, if, if there are any problems, do not hesitate. I'm going to give the toll-free number again, 0800-746-746. That's the COGTA toll-free number. But also there's the anti-corruption hotline, National Anti-Corruption Hotline, 0800-701-701. 0800-701-701. Um, and there's the presidential hotline, 17737. 17737. So all of those uh, are, are areas, are, are, are tools that people can use to help government to, to combat corruption, to combat uh, wrongdoing, to make sure that we, we, we get our programs to, to function the way they, they should. Yes, Ma but maybe yeah, Dr. Mgadi yeah, yeah. wants to add. Like, like we have said earlier on, uh, Deputy Minister is accompanied by a powerful team. And remember that team we spoke about earlier on. Now, now, now we are sitting here with Dr. Mgad and she, she's been dying, you know, to, 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 to share with us some of these interesting programs. I, in fact, there's no way we can live without getting her to share this with us. The floor is yours, Dr. Mgad. Uh, thank you, uh, Lennox. Thank you, Deputy Minister, for the opportunity to engage with uh, members of our community. Uh, the Deputy Minister asked me specifically to speak to uh, how we recruit our participants. I think it's important to highlight the fact that uh, one of the key principles that we adhere to when we recruit our participants is non-discrimination. Participants and members of the community out there need to know that it does not matter what party you belong to. We've had people complain to us, saying that uh, the CWP might be uh, enrolling participants that belong to a particular party, but that is not true. The criteria for enrollment in the CWP include unemployment. People have to be unemployed, but being unemployed alone is not enough. We target 
particularly people who are both unemployed and poor and who live in areas that uh, do not uh, receive adequate services, areas where the useful work that our participants do are going to add value to the quality of life of those particular communities. We're talking here about uh, uh, schools that need renovation. I think the Deputy Minister referred to that. Um, the elderly that need assistance uh, with uh, taking their medication, ensuring that uh, their linen is washed, ensuring that uh, they have meals before they take their medication. Uh, we have young people that assist in schools, providing support uh, to, to, to teachers as they teach big classes, assisting with the uh, aftercare, when parents, uh, when children have to stay uh, long after school uh, is left, helping young ones with their homework while they're waiting for parents to come get them when they themselves come from work. So this, uh, this, uh, the, the, these are some of the things that uh, the program uh, assists to improve the lives of people in our communities. And we are very, very honored to be able to serve our communities, to make sure that uh, people can derive benefits, can, can, can support their own uh, communities, and they can also gain some skills that can potentially uh, enable them to access uh, other work opportunities that uh, pay better uh, uh, incentives or better uh, wages and stipends. Oh, thank you, thank you, uh, Dr. Mkadi. Uh, uh, now, allow me, DM, to, to, to expose the following provinces. Uh, you see, we, we went out there and say to the client, to my colleagues, we are working with all the provinces. And, 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 and in the next coming five minutes, if I don't receive a call from the following provinces, you know who you are, uh, I'm not going to be happy. There's no way I'm going to allow the DM leaving this place thinking it's only people in the Western Cape, Northwest, Free State, and Northern Cape that participated. Now, Eastern Cape, I'm calling upon all of you. You are going to call. KZN, you are going to call. Pumalanga, you are going to call. Limpombo, we are going to call. And Houting, out of all the places we are hosting and we are not even calling. You cannot give us the impression that you are not participating. Now, the next coming four minutes, if you don't call us, we are not going to pay all those stations that are working with us. Mm -hmm. uh, at the end, perhaps one last question from, from, from me. Does this developing trend, uh, I'm not sure where it's coming from. People are, are, are destroying their own things. People are destroying their own, their own infrastructure. At times, people have participated in building these things. And we've seen them destroying them. Some of these things really are irreplaceable. You, it's not like a structure. It's like a book. Last two books that were there throughout the country were destroyed. Now, when it comes to this program, we see these people that are involved putting together these things. Are we sure that none of these projects that were busy building with the people that have joined or partnering with the department in the CWP, that are the victims of these skirmishes that we see at intervals. Can we be proud and say <laughs> people that are involved in these projects, they take them as theirs and they guard them and no one will come, for instance, and, and, and dirty the same dam that was cleaned by these people. What, 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 what is our understanding in as far as this particular one is concerned? No. I think you, 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 you raise a, an issue which is very important and regrettably very current. Um, 
in South Africa, we, we as a nation, we we fought long and hard to defeat apartheid, a repressive, terrible system that oppressed people, that divided us, that kept us apart. But also, it was a system that suppressed our basic rights, the right to freedom of speech, the right to association, the right to protest peacefully. So we fought long and hard to to have a constitution that guarantees the right to protest, but to protest peacefully and unarmed. So as a government, we are absolutely committed, and in fact, we have a duty to safeguard any citizen's right to, to protest. We have no problem with citizens protesting peacefully and unarmed. The problem comes in when some uh, amongst us, and I think it's a very small minority, then take it upon themselves to behave in an illegal and an unconstitutional way, to trample upon the rights of other citizens, to destroy or to damage their private property, to endanger their lives, and also to to destroy that property which belongs to us as a community, common in, in common. Mm. Uh, a school, a creche, a library, a clinic, a university, mm. a bridge, a road, a power transformer, a water pump. Mm. Those are things that we as a community own together. They serve all of us. So who gives the right to one or two amongst thousands, tens of thousands of millions to go and destroy what belongs to to all of us. It can't be right. Uh, It's not right. It's illegal. It's unconstitutional. And I think all of us have a collective duty um, to work with with, uh, government in general, but the law enforcement agencies in particular, to to make sure that that is is prevented and where it does occur that those are... Well, people are identified and brought to book. Yeah. Well, well, what a powerful closing note, uh, Tim. Uh, let's give an opportunity to Gauteng. Gauteng has, has responded. He's going to, to close the program f- f- for us. Uh, give us your last, the very last question, Gauteng. Um, Fizzy. Uh, well, good evening, how are you? Great, how are you, sir? I'm very uh, well. My name is Fizzy. I'm calling from Gauteng in Midland. I, um, I've been listening to the topic and all the callers and all, and the, like, the comments and commentators. Um, I just want to say that here in Houghton, we're also running a very similar program to the EPWP program that's running. But now, our only, how can I put it, um, we only need like uh, more information in terms of like, how can we uh, get assistance like from government stakeholders, because at this kind of moment, like, the whole project like we started everything from constitution from business plan from profile to budgeting but we just need to know in terms of like which are all uh what's the first step that we need to take in terms of getting like uh government institutions involved apart from local councillors and things like that because uh currently the problem that you currently are facing is that the community that i'm staying in uh it's more than 30 years old and other neighboring uh communities that are closer to us They've been like for less than 15 years uh, uh, that they've been uh, established, but they are more developed than our community, than the community that I'm staying in, and also like our local council are also from their community. So we just want to know that like, if we are having a very similar program like the one that EPWP uh, is running, how can we best get assistance from our uh, government institutes? Thank you very much, sir. Uh, that was the last question. Uh, we do not want to take advantage. Stations have given us up until five past. Uh, DM, as you respond that, you can even give your parting shot uh, as we have come to the end of the program. To you, DM. No, uh, thank you. Thank you very, very much, uh, Lennox. And again, just uh, a, a word of very, very deep appreciation to all of the 75 community radio stations that have formed part of this wonderful um, exercise of sharing information, getting feedback, getting uh, answering questions and, and, and getting very valuable suggestions. Um, 
Mfizi's uh, question is actually a very good question to to end on because really what it highlights is the importance of citizens taking the initiative organizing themselves starting things but then having partnership with other organizations in society NGOs business labor and partnering partnering with uh, government so I, we would we would love to to engage further with um, Fizi about the program that that he's uh, been part of starting in his community um we would like to explore ways that either CWP can work with you um or if there's another government department uh that might be more appropriate we can link you with them so again um for the benefit of Mfizi but also other listeners the cogt uh, CWP toll free number is 0800 746 747 but we would also appreciate it uh, Lennox if if you could just make sure that we get um, Fizi's number definitely, definitely. so the doctor Mgadi can can make uh, contact with him uh, definitely uh, uh, DM we are going to give you all the numbers and we will make a follow up follow up to those uh, callers on that note we have come to the end of our special broadcast i know i was talking with uh, many of my colleagues and uh, they promised that they will come back with this or similar programs tomorrow next week next month so this is not the end of the program on that note uh, to my good doctor yam gadi thank you very much to my dm thank you very much dm thank you very very much